In this short video, we're going to look at another application of double integrals that has to do with probability and joint density functions. So before we talk about joint density functions, let's go back to Calculus 2, where we might have learned about probability density functions. A function f of x, so it's a function of only one variable, is a probability density function, or a PDF, provided that it satisfies two conditions. The first condition is that the function values have to be non-negative for all x. And the second condition is that the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of f of x dx has to equal exactly 1. Now, if x, and it just seems to be a convention that we use capital letters to represent uh, random variables that would correspond to our lowercase x in the integral. So if uppercase x represents a continuous random variable, then the probability that x is between a and b can be determined by evaluating the integral from a to b of f of x dx. The mean of this probability density function is mu equals the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x times f of x dx. So this should remind us of the uh, formula for the moment. So let's look at an example, just because we have to recall some of the techniques of integration. So light bulbs, which are advertised to have a lifespan of a thousand hours, are found to work for the number of hours given by this function right here. This, and it turns out this is indeed a probability density function. We'd like to find the probability that a light bulb lasts for more than 800 hours. Well, I would need to find the integral with the lower bound 800, upper bound infinity, of this function. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and notice that this is a improper integral. And the way to evaluate an improper integral is to replace the infinity sign with a dummy variable. And then we'll let that dummy variable go to infinity by taking a limit. So I'm going to go ahead and find the antiderivative, evaluate it with my dummy variable, then take the limit as u goes to infinity. Now the antiderivative of e to the negative 0.001 t is going to be, um, I'll need to make a u substitution. I'll wind up dividing by negative 0.001. So the antiderivative will just be negative e to the negative 0.001 t. I'll have to evaluate that between 800 and u, uh, and then let u go to infinity. So when I do that, I find that the probability is exactly e to the negative power of 0 0.8, which turns out to be about 0 0.45. And just remember that probabilities have to be a number between 0 and 1. 0 meaning that there's no chance it could happen, and 1 meaning that it's certain that the event could happen. And so. Uh, this is just an example, but certainly my own personal experience is that a lot of times light bulbs, especially the new ones, which are LEDs, are advertised for a certain number of hours, and they sure do last a lot less. And that's my view. Anyway, let's move back to math. And here in Calculus 3, we're going to look at something called joint density functions, which are related to probability density functions. They are functions of two variables. And again, we have two conditions. 
in order to ensure that it is a joint density function or JDF. Again, the function values have to be non-negative for all values of x and y. And the integral over the entire plane, so over all of R2, meaning x goes from negative infinity to infinity, y goes from negative infinity to infinity, the integral of this function has to also equal 1. Now the probability, so now we have two random variables, x and y, and the probability that the ordered pair x comma y is in a region d is given by the double integral over d of our joint density function f. We don't really have a single mean, we have two means. We have the expected value of x or the x mean mu sub 1 is given by the double integral over all, all of r2 of x times f dA. And the expected value of y, which is mu 2, is the double integral over, over all of r2 of y times f dA. And again, these should really remind us of almost like the center of mass of this distribution. So let's look at another example. We're given a function which is 0.1e to the negative 0.5x plus 0.2y. That's when x and y are non-negative. So in the first quadrant and everywhere else it's just going to be zero. So we're asked to do three things. We want to verify that this is indeed a joint density function. We'd like to find the probability that the random variable y is greater than or equal to one. And then a separate probability that x is less than or equal to two and y is less than or equal to four. So these are actually two subparts here. I'm going to not join these as combined probabilities, but just this probability separate from this probability. And then we'll find the expected values, both the mu1 and the mu2. So to verify that it's a joint density function, we can see that it is greater than or equal to zero. Exponential functions are never negative, And outside of the first quadrant, it's always zero. So now we're going to have to calculate the integral. Now it should be from negative infinity to positive infinity, but we know that when x or y is negative, the function is zero. So we can just start our integrals from zero and go to infinity. And then we'll have to calculate this improper double integral. So we'll do that by calculating it as an iterated integral. So I'll do the inside first. And just as I do with a, an improper integral of a single variable, I'm just going to replace the infinity with a dummy variable. And then I'll calculate the antiderivative. And then I'll let that variable t go to infinity by taking the limit. So let's go ahead and calculate the partial antiderivative with respect to x. Then I'll have to evaluate that between 0 and t. And finally, I have to let the t go to infinity. So as t goes to infinity, e to the negative 0 0.5 t and then something else, that's going to go to 0. The second term is independent of t. And so that's the only term that will be left in the outer integral. So now, what else did I do here? I took negative 1 over 0 0.5. I know I have a negative times a negative, so I'm going to wind up with a positive. 1 over 0 0.5 is 2. 2 times 0 0.1 will give me 0 0.2. All right, let's take the antiderivative 
of, oh, before I do that, let me write it as a limit. We have to still have to do the replacement of infinity by a variable. And I can use the same variable. I use t on the inner integral. And I can use t on the outer integral as well. Now let me take the antiderivative. And I can see that uh, when I evaluate this, um, when I put in t, I'll have e to the negative 0.2t. As t goes to infinity, that term will go to 0. So I'll we'll only be left with a term, which will be e to the power of 0. That'll be subtracted, which will make this minus sign a positive sign. And then I'm 0 0.2 times 1 over 0 0.2 is 1. And so after all of my work. I just need to make one small correction here. There should be a t here. Now as t goes to infinity, that term goes to zero. And sure enough, the integral equals one. All right, let's move on to part b. And again, it's two separate calculations here. So we're going to first, in part b, find the probability that y is greater than or equal to 1. So we'll have to evaluate our double integral. But now, uh, for the y bounds, the lower y bound is going to start at 1. Because we're looking for the probability that y is greater than or equal to 1. So the integral is going to be very similar to what we did before. Um, we're still going to have to do a, a l limit as uh, t goes to infinity. It's going to be the same antiderivative that we already calculated, so I won't go through the details of that. And again, we're left with now the same integral that we had before uh, in validating that it was a joint density function, with one exception that our lower bound now is 1 instead of 0. And when I evaluate that integral, I get e raised to the power of negative 0 0.2, which is about 0 0.82. And the second probability, we're looking at x being less than or equal to 2, y being less than or equal to 4. And we know, again, that the our function is 0 whenever x is and y is negative. So our lower bounds can start at 0. The upper bound for y would be 4, and the upper bound for x is 2. So no improper integrals here and the same type of antiderivative. So we'll go through that pretty quickly. First, antidifferentiate with respect to uh, x. And I see that I need to add in my dx dy. So antidifferentiate with respect to x. Evaluate that. Then let's see what anti differentiate the outer integral, evaluate that between 0 and 4. And it doesn't really simplify very much. We get four terms uh, 1 plus 3 powers of e, but that turns out to be about 0 0.35. All right, so part C, we're going to find the expected values. So the expected value of x, that's our mu1. We're just going to have to have the integral uh, where we have the integrand, the joint density function formula, multiplied by x on the inside. And so we are going to have to do 
integration by parts here. So I'll do u equals x, du equals dx. dv is going to be negative 0.5x minus 0.2y dx. That should be an x there. And so then the antiderivative uh, would be negative 2 e to the same power. So now I have uh, replaced the infinity with the t variable. When I do integration by parts, remember I get a first part which doesn't have an integral and then the second part which has the integral, the upper bound in both cases is replaced by t and I'll have to take the limit as t goes to infinity. So now let's look at this term here. When I put 0 in for the lower bound, I'm just going to get 0. When I put t in for the upper bound, I'll have e to the negative 0.5t minus 0.2y, which I consider a constant. And so as t goes to infinity, this first term is going to go to zero. So that's going to make no contribution to the outer integral. So I'll still need to find the antiderivative here and let t go to infinity. All right. And I just have to remember my dy at the end of this integral. So I'm going to take uh, the limit now as t goes to infinity of this after I evaluate from 0 to t. Uh, again, this first term that has e to the negative 0.5t, as t goes to infinity, that goes to 0. This term is just a constant with respect to t. And I'll have a negative times a negative making a positive. So I have a positive 4. multiply that times the 0 0.1, which is out in front. So now I have 0 0.4, and I'm going to work on the outer integral here. And so let's put my dy in here. So the outer integral, I've replaced uh, the infinity with t. I'll let t go to infinity after I find the antiderivative and perform the evaluation. So when I find the antiderivative, all right, I have a negative 5 because that's the reciprocal of negative 0.2y. And when I put in t, I know that part's going to go to 0. So only what happens when I have a 0 in the place of y, I'll just get e to the 0 power, which is 1. But I'll be subtracting that, so that'll make that a positive 5. Positive 5 times 0 0.4 is exactly 2. Now, to find mu 2, I guess I called this part D, but it's really not part D. Um, it's just the second part of part C. Um, it's a very similar uh, computation, except for now Y is multiplied on the inside here. So again, I'll need to do integration by parts. And the same type of calculation. Uh, again, this first term, as we saw, in the calculation of the expected value of x, uh, this first term makes no contribution to the outer integral. Still need to find the antiderivative of this function here and evaluate that from 0 to t and let t go to infinity. And uh, when I do that, I only get the e to the negative 0.5x. I have a negative here times a negative, which makes a positive. And then take that 25, multiply it times 0 0.1. That gives me 2.5. And then convert the 
if the outer integral is an improper integral, I'll replace the infinity with t. I'll take the limit as t goes to infinity after taking the antiderivative and performing the evaluation. And again, when I evaluate, put the t in here, uh, that's going to be e to the negative 0.5t. As t goes to infinity, that term goes to 0. But then I'll have minus a negative 2, so positive 2, e to the 0 power. So that would be positive 2 times 2.5, which gives me 5.